James Holzmeyer with the Wabash Railroad Historical Society. We're working on Wabash Canoes 2824 here at the Monticello Railway Museum. If you want to get a shot of the 2824. What we're doing now is blocking the, uh, well what we have done is block the windows with plywood um, so we can sandblast. That'll keep that black beauty sand out of the caboose and save us from having to clean it up. So we've got that done. My son Matt, who's filming this, and I, thank you Matt, um, mm -hmm. have got the plywood pretty much all done to seal the caboose, including the end doors. But what we're doing right now is uh, going to make a little instructional video on how to um, put new weather stripping and replace the pane of glass in the sliding windows that go up on the cupola. Now Kent McClure, the uh, maintenance officer here at the Monticello Museum. Um, I was not able to get any brand new weather stripping out of the outfit in Pennsylvania that sells it, but they were more receptive to him because he's with the railroad. So he ordered us some of this uh, brand new weather stripping that goes around the glass pane. I just measured and cut it. You'll need about, for each of these sliding windows, you need right at 90 inches. It's about 90 inches of weather stripping. We've already taken the glass pane out, so Matt, if you want to come on in, we'll show you how to... Um... Are we starting? No. Just keep it going. Okay. We'll show you how to put it in. This is a cross... Can you get the cross section? This is a cross section of the weather stripping. The glass pane will go... will sandwich here in the middle between these, and it'll tighten up against it and prevent your leaks, which I know some cabooses out there have some really bad leaks. So this little lip fits in the, there's three slots in these aluminum windows. This little strip fits in the bottom slot and you just go around and slide that in. Make sure it's nice and tight in there. And it's got to be in the bottom slot, otherwise it won't work. Here, I'm going to need to pull this around, Matt. You'll want to keep, you want to keep debris like sawdust and dust and stuff out of your weather stripping as much as you can just to help prevent leaks. Now, we always, this is how they came out. Um, the seam in the weather stripping was at the top on each of these windows, which kind of, you know, kind of makes sense. You can theoretically place it anywhere around here that you want. Um, but when you go around a corner, see how it's going to turn up? Mm -hmm. Okay, back off just a little bit. You need to make sure that it's tight in there. Bring it down a little more, and then push up, push toward the curve a little bit just to make sure it's all good and seated. Give us a long shot here, man. There we go. Just keep going down. Yeah, the corner, Matt says the corners are always the hardest. And he is absolutely 100% correct. Okay, like I said, you go around the corner, the curve, come out a little farther, and then push back toward the corner. Just to make sure it's set. Another third corner. I'm going to spin this around. Come out a little ways and push back. Make sure it's seated. These, these corners, the inside weather stripping that's on, this is the exterior, I guess I should mention this. This is where all the rain and moisture hits. You'll notice how the inside weather stripping kind of curls up. Can you get a shot of that? Mm hmm. But when you plate, when we put the glass pane in here, that's going to even out. 
and it's going to curl back down because the weight of the glass will hold it down. Okay. Did you cut it exactly where it needs to be? I hope so. We'll find out. Yeah. Push it back toward yeah. the... Looks like you did. You may, may need to cut a little bit more. Well, we'll just push it back toward the... Yeah. Okay. I may need to trim just a tiny bit off right there. Mm -hmm. Or we can just do this. It's Here. better to... really is better... Hold on. Better to have cut it a little longer so you can trim it back other than as opposed to trimming it too short and you'll have a gap in here that you'll have to fill somehow. Yeah. Okay, that's good. All right, now it's time to see if we can fit this glass pane in here. These are, these are um, tempered windows or the, the kind of windows that have glass on either side of a film and you can see the film. That keeps it from shattering into plate glass if someone puts their hand through it or something. It'll just crack basically, um, which is really, really nice. It's basically too much thick to have someone punch through it or anything. Well, I mean, if the caboose is in a wreck and someone mm -hmm. puts their hit elbow into it or head or something, it won't cut them. Okay. Now, come around here, Matt. We'll show them how to... You notice this lip is still out. And we oh, just kind of slide the, slide the paint in there. This one may go in pretty easy, actually. Did you pull it up enough? I think so. Mm -hmm. I'll do it. You just worry about filming. Mm -hmm. We'll be good. And you just kind of... Ah, wunderbar. Ah, yes. This one went in fairly easily. Mm -hmm. Do you need the thicker one? Or Not the... yet. Okay. Let's get a shot of this. I told you how this would... You'll still maybe have some bubbles in there, but bring a screwdriver in Flat. and make sure that they're, they're not folded over themselves. I like that one. That one is. These two flattened out pretty good. Yeah. It's these is this the, the side that you put them in? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, this is the top side. Or the top side. That you slid the top one, top side of the window in. 12 o'clock position. Put your seal, or the seam at the 12 o'clock position. Press down a little further. Get it good and seated. And you're now ready to lock this weather stripping in. Anything with a broad blade is good because all we're going to do here, I'll start it by hand, is to just put this edge into the top slot, mm -hmm. the top, the top of the three slots. Mm -hmm. joke to Matt last night that you kind of need the hands of a raccoon to do this but uh, all it is, that's all you do is uh, make sure that fits into that top slot and you work your way around the corners are pretty much always the hardest aren't mm -hmm. they yeah but sometimes if you don't push this down enough that it'll It'll, um, oh, that's right. Leave a gap. I, I guess I should mention that when you get the glass pane seated against the back of the weather stripping where you want it, come around and start giving yourself some extra 
just pull up on that to give yourself a little extra to get that set in there. See how it's locked in here? It's flush with the frame. Not too close. Is it going to be fuzzy? Oh, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Just come in here. Start locking this stuff in. Now, as I'm doing this, the, I'll mention the cabooses that I'm thinking of that need, that really, really need this new weather stripping that I've seen over the years. Number one is the caboose up in. You missed this one. Is caboose number. Sit down, though. I'll get it. I'll, I'll get it. Get there. You did. Is it. caboose number 2780. That's up in Stanbury, Missouri. Pork or something? Yep, the 2790 down in Oric, Missouri, has what probably is the original, what probably is the original weather stripping because it's so deteriorated over the years, it's hanging down in strips. And every, um, every little bit of, every little bit of water that gets into the caboose is going to rot your, your wood inside. And once, we know that once wood rots, starts it's hard to stop you got to tear it all out or stabilize it so um, 2790 down in Oric mentioned that the one at the Tennessee Valley Railway Museum I think that's 2774 also has Wabash Cruise 2774 also has this hanging down in strips and the other caboose I can think about is out in Maryland. I believe it's Maryland. Uh, genuine Wabash caboose. Dad, Dad. Hmm? it's okay. Hmm? Is this okay? Yeah, it should be okay. Like I said, the, the curves are the hardest part. That's where your wide bladed screwdriver or I'm using a wood chisel here, which I know that's not what wood chisels are used for. But you will resharpen it when we're done. There we go. Dad, you're bleeding. Yeah, I know. I caught myself in. Well, that's alright. I didn't know that until I They're usually pretty good at that. Now, this is the last window. This is the fourth window. This is our last window, so we thought we'd make this video to help you guys out in Tennessee and Oric and Stanbury in case you wanted to get a hold of Kent McClure out here. Maybe since he has a good relationship with the, I forget what the name of the outfit is. What do you mean? Um, they took over the catalog for Power Parts Corporation. Oh, it's called Logan Corporation. And it's in Huntington, West Virginia. So it's the Logan Corporation. And it, act, it did. It took Kent McClure to, to get us this gasket because they weren't, they'd say they'd return my phone calls and then they wouldn't. And it was just kind of a, kind of a mess. And uh, there's another gentleman here at the MRM that actually needs this for the porthole uh, weather stripping on his E8 that he's restoring. Yeah, John Downing. So Kent got him on the phone and said, hey, I realize we're, we're a small operation. We're uh, low volume, high maintenance, unlike NS or BNSF, but if you can get us, if you can sell us some of this weather stripping, we've got a couple projects we need it for, and they accommodate him. So get a hold of Kent McClure here at the Monticello Railway Museum. His email address is Kent 
K E N T at M R Y M dot org. M R Y M dot org. And we'll see. If you want to, if you guys want to get together, we'll make make a volume order and just get it shipped out to you because I'm I'm considering the amount of wood rot we ran into inside here, I just don't want to see it happen mm -hmm. to anybody else. If you're gonna restore your caboose. Oops. This one takes a little more, takes a little more finesse. I've run into a trouble spot here, Matthew. You want me to help? I may need your expertise. Matt has been a big help last few days working on the caboose, and this is like his thing. Thank his, you. Is putting this weather strip in. <laughs> he has found his calling. Okay, here's the uh, part two. Matt was able to finish this up. Uh, while I tended to my wounded finger, um, just zip this thing all the way around. And you want the, the ends to overlap, obviously, to keep the rain and stuff out, but there's the, there's the end of it. Uh, for the sake of making this video just a little longer than it normally would be, I'll point this out. And the, at, on the straight edge of each of the slider windows is this, uh, it's called a, well I, well, I think what it's called is a wiper seal. But on the caboose that I was able to get up into, into the cupola, which was the Stanberry caboose, the original seal on it was so uh, shrunken with age that it, it was just barely, um, barely comes past the edge. And it needs to come out probably a half an inch like this to create a seal. Let's see if I can. I know the ladder's in the way, but you see that gap right there. It needs to, the rubber needs to fit very, very close to, not up against, but very, very close to. Um, the side of the caboose to keep the uh, horizontal rainwater from uh, getting in and destroying those wood sills that are under there, that are in there surrounding the, the window casing. Um, and once we get the windows back in, I'll make a video and I'll show you how, how close it fits. It, it needs to fit. Um, I, 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 did, I cut it to where there's just a tiny bit, maybe a millimeter gap, because we didn't want that rubber wiper seal rubbing against the side, the body side of the caboose, because it would mar the new paint that we're going to put on the caboose. But anyway, here's a cross section of it. I had to make my own since Logan Corporation says they did not, they do not make that anymore. Just a second. Sorry. So we, we ordered, or had Kent order um, some strip rubber from McMaster Car up in Chicago and you just I just got some L-shaped aluminum brackets and put them on the bandsaw. I thought this lip hanging over might keep help keep moisture out of at least the window track and um, how those screws are secured in there is with speed nuts the strips with the hole drilled in the middle and uh, they fit inside that window and to show you how I'll just show you a cross section of that and the speed nuts would fit down in there and brace themselves against that See that lip in there? It's on both sides. And um, that's how those screws are 
secured, painted it safety red, which is going to be the official color of our caboose. I did put some, on this one there was kind of a gap. The aluminum must have been bent or something. So I did put some silicone in here to seal that. Now this is the new silicone that uh, is paintable. And it does, on, on another window I tried it and it does hold hold paint really well. It appears to hold really well. So we'll see how it weathers over the years. We may have to try something different. But that's the new technology is that, I guess, is that paintable silicone. And I'll put a coat of, I'll spray this with safety red because this has been in here for a while. It's real dry and stuff. So we'll see how it holds. Anyway, that is our instructional video on uh, how to get these windows sealed. Oh, and to take them apart, you just do it in the opposite order. You just start, take it out from whichever direction you want and just start peeling that lip out. But on a, to get it, to get the wind, to pop the window out, I should mention this. You'll want to put a 2x4 or 1x2 or something on the glass pane to where it spreads out, you know, the force. So you put your 2x4. Just... Say, for example, like that. And then when these window panes have been in this weather stripping for a while and the weather stripping gets dry and cracked and brittle and stuff, it seals itself to the glass pane and it'll actually leave um, residue, black residue on the glass pane itself. So the reason you put the wooden strip under here is because when you apply downward force, you want that force spread out on the entire pane, not just one kind of one corner. You, you don't want to crack your glass. So you just put downward pressure, little downward pressure on the window frame and it should crack loose from the inner weather strip and the pane should come right out from there. You just uh, go around all four corners and the pane should come right out. Once you get this, um, all this unfurled from the edge. So that's our instructional video. It's in two parts, like we said, and we'll post this on the YouTube channel. So you guys out there who are looking at, who might in the future be looking at uh, replacing your weather strip on your slider windows to keep the moisture out, uh, be kind of an instructional video. I hope it's been clear. Uh, it took a little experimenting on our part, but we finally got it done. This was the last window of the four. So uh, we'll end it there.